Man, we got a special guest on on the East West football today. We got HTM Sports. Can you give us a little bit of a bio, HTM Sports, before we get a little further? Yeah, man, it's your boy Henny Demore reporting live from the liquor store right here, man. And <laughs> hey, I've been blessed to come over here to y'all podcast, man, East West. But uh, really, man, I just started podcasting. You know, the beginning of last season. You know, I got in it with Wes, and, you know, I've just been grinding since then. I think I done did a show every day since then. So, you know, just really cover Dallas Cowboy content. I usually the number guy on the panel. So, you know, just I'm just ready to jump into it, man, and see how this goes, man. I'm, I'm excited to, uh, you know, see what we can get into today. Look, we already got somebody, uh, Desmond Ironman. I, I, guess, I know he knows you. I guess he knows you, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he reporting live from the liquor store right now. Him, oh, my boy, King store. G. Let's get uh, it. James, Jameson Taylor and slid in over here in the building with me. Salute to y'all, man. What's up, guys? Let's go. Hand DC for live, right? I love it, man. I and you know what? I feel I feel bad for Kendall because he's a little bit outnumbered today, guys. So no, yeah. no well, listen, listen, we all know in his heart, in his heart, <laughs> he's a cowboys fan, man. Cowboy, man. We're Stop bringing- it, Kendall. No. Come on Listen. and talk. You, you need to come half on. My, half my family is Cowboy fans. I'm a Patriots fan. Come on home, now, baby. I will say, if I if if I had to have a second team, if, if it was legal to have a second team, it would be the Cowboys. <laughs> if it was legal. So, but for right now, I'm a Patriots fan, and that's what it is. We will be going to Dallas later on this year. So, <laughs> looking forward to meeting up with HTM and the Cowboys guys. Indeed, my boy, indeed. He will be a Dallas Cowboy They're fan. They're probably going to give me a friendly ovation when I get in the building. Jerry <laughs> <Wood>. <laughs> Look at that. They say, what's up, Mr. Henny? Man, <laughs> they love it. So, so, so over it. Mr. Henny, what's up, y'all? Happy Sunday. Hey, Sunday fun day, right? For everybody. Yes, uh, I need one of them hats, Javier. Hey, you already know, baby. You already know. <laughs> we actually, we actually, we actually, we do. Uh, that's true, brand. We actually do giveaways on our uh, on the Cowboy Cast uh, YouTube channel that we do have. Uh, it's good to have outside input too. Yes, you're right. Uh, yeah. This is the place, right? That we talk just the NFL in general. But today we're going to talk Cowboys. We haven't talked about Cowboys on East West in quite some time, man. I mean. For the longest, we've been just talking about how how it feels like now um, the AFC seems like to be the powerhouse and whatnot, and uh, and of course NFC is starting to catch up. But let's get right into it. Uh, HTM, um, one more. It's a six to three Braves right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, my my boy Jameson, one of my biggest supporters, and he is a, definitely a diehard Braves fan. So he always keeps me in the loop. All right, all right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. cool. I, I like that. Uh, we need one of them, Harv. We need, we need, we need a score, a score, a score. We do, right? man. We do. Uh, we're gonna we're taking notes, but let us know, uh, HCM. What do you think, man? What do you think overall of the Dallas Cowboys off season? Off season in totality, we we'll talk about off like uh free agency and the draft combined. Every, the whole enchilada. I think the Dallas Cowboys made some strides to improve their team overall, man. I'm definitely, I was pleasantly surprised by the moves that they made. You know, I'm usually waiting for the Dallas Cowboys to go shopping at TJ Maxx or go shopping at Ross, you know, get some discount veteran players, you know, might get you a guy that used to be hard back in the day that's washed up right now. But, you know, they they actually went out and got some quality depth. You know, years past, you know, they would have probably resigned somebody like Noah Brown and tried to sell you on his player development and, and what to expect from him going forward. But instead, they let him walk. They traded a compensatory pick to get Brandon Cooks into the building. We all know he has 6,000-yard season in the last nine years. Been a number one wide receiver majority of his tenure in the NFL. And really, when he comes up to a team, you know, he, he he's usually a guy that's plug and play and, and productive, you know, the moment he gets through the door. So I was happy with that move. You know, and listen, I have been a guy that has defended Anthony Brown for a long time. You know, you look at coverage at pure coverage grades like he was one of your better coverage corners. Like when you compare him to what, you know, other people on the team did. But we cannot sit here and act like Stefan Gilmore is not a head and shoulder, you know, improvement over Anthony Brown. So you went and got a former defensive player of the year. You went and got a, 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 a former number one option in, in Brandon Cooks. And then what surprised me, they actually invested in the in their run defense when they picked up Monty <clears throat> Smith. Dallas Cowboys last year were 22nd against the run. 
So, you know, you got the best you know, uh, one tech in the NFL draft. You can make an argument that we're better defensive tackles, but he, he's the best pure run stopper that was available. So they went and got him. You know, you factor in what we brought in, you know, through those trades. And then, hell, there's even some other guys I think people are sleeping on. Now, I'm not going to even bring up uh, Schoonmaker because I was not a, a fan of that draft pick. But, you know, I think there is, you know, some upside for a guy like Junior Fihoko, who was also playing to play some three tick. You know, I think there's uh, possibilities for Overshone to get on the field and rotational work. So I'm happy with the way the offseason went. I love I love what I'm hearing, man. Uh, but I guess I'll, I have one more for you, but I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Harvey and we'll get back to mine in a little bit. Harv. Yeah, man. So, you know, obviously all the things that he stated is correct, man. They did a lot of things to help this this offense and defense. But to me, it, the biggest thing is, did they do enough is the question. Because I feel like they kind of neglected a little bit the linebacker spot. And I don't mean by drafting. I mean like a veteran. Because if LBE goes down, if you look at the backups, they're all really young. They're really young, including the, the rookie, right? So the other side of that flip is the, the guard position. You know we had a lot of problems last year rotating the offensive linemen. And, and to me, man, I feel like – I don't know if we did enough. So is Did we do enough? Do we have enough that's going to take us over the hump in those two positions going forward? Well, just to give my honest opinion, it just depends on how they go about it schematically. Because if you look at the offensive line position, you know, they went out there, they were not really able to play the offensive lineup that they wanted to from day one. When they originally drafted Tyler Smith, you know, they viewed him as a left guard and they said he would be the left tackle of the future. Well, the future came very quick because, you know, Tyrus Smith, you know, tore the muscle off his bone. You know, that sounds yep. excruciating. So that's what that's exactly what happened to that man. So they were forced to play Tyler Smith at left at left tackle. And then by the time that Tyron Smith was healthy, Terrence Steele was lost for the season. So he went out there and he campaigned to play right tackle. So you never really saw the offensive line at the position they were supposed to be at. This year, they're saying to start the season, Tyron Smith will be back at his natural position at left tackle where he will go into Cannet. Tyler Smith will play left guard. You know, Biotis, who just made his first Pro Bowl selection last year, will play center. Zach Martin is still one of the top-rated right tackles, I mean, right guards in the NFL. And then Terrence Steele, if we're lucky, will play, you know, majority of the season at right tackle. So if they play their best positions, you don't necessarily have a hole at the offensive line, you know, because, you know, the, the issue came last year with it when they played musical chairs, when the injuries happened, you know, so on and so forth. Now, I was team draft the offensive lineman. You know, I was beating the table for the boy out of Florida. Even though he was a right, uh, right guard, you know, I saw potential to flip him. But because the Dallas Cowboys did not do so, you know, that obviously uh, leads, leads me to believe that they are comfortable with their personnel right now. And the only way you can be comfortable with that personnel is if you put them all in position to succeed. Now, we all know, you know, Tyron Smith did not look good as a right tackle last year. But I ain't never seen Tyler Smith, uh, Tyron Smith look out of place as a left tackle. Mm. I ain't never seen him get toe out the frame as a left tackle. I ain't never seen, you know, Terrence Steele – you know, get bodied too bad in, in, in pass pro at, at right tackle, even though they're not his strong suit. So I think them playing those five guys in tandem at their best position is going to lead to the Dallas Cowboys being successful on the offensive line. Now, in terms of the linebacker position, who currently has the green dot on this team? I, I, be, J, J. Ron Kurtz, your safety yeah. has the green dot. Oh. So Dan Quinn, you know, when he had Bobby Wagner, he rolled with him. But when he took over his own team, when he went to Atlanta, they implemented the three safety look that we have right now. So, you know, in a passing league, a majority of teams, even though people say they're 4-3 defenses, 3-4 defenses, majority of teams play, uh, play nickel 70% of the time. Dallas Cowboys are no different. So J. Ron Curse never leaves the box. He has the green dot. He makes the defensive audibles. You know, so it, by default, he really is your safety. So, you know, that's just what Dan Quinn liked. Now, I was a, I was a person that wanted Bobby Wagner when he was uh, available. He just made an all-pro uh, selection, had over 100 tackles, you know, had six sacks. He was balling. He went crazy last year, right? Heads and shoulders, still one of the best linebackers in the league. But the Dallas Cowboys decided they still want to keep the speed and versatility of their three safety look. So, you know, theoretically, you could have some issues there. But 
you know, schematically, that's not what they want to do. So, you know, that's why I'm, I'm trusting it because look at who else they picked up. They picked up a guy who's basically a J. Ron Curse clone in Overshone. I believe Overshone is going to be your starting nickels, middle linebacker, whatever you want to call it next year because I don't think they'll resign J. Ron Curse just because of his age and uh, how much it'll cost him. So moving forward, you know, you could you could make the argument that they, they need another linebacker, and Levi made that argument before. But just going from a schematic standpoint of what they said that they wanted to do, you know, I think they want the, they want the big nickel. <clears throat> and, you know, just got to hope that that pans out. But they did get Mozzie, who should free up some uh, some space for those guys. They should be able to stay cleaner, stay healthier, and have easier lanes into the backfield this season because they have true defensive tackle play in front of them. Well said. You know, I think that, uh, you know, yeah. I think with Monty, I think he's going to help clear a lot of these lanes. And maybe it'll extend LB's career, maybe even allow Damone Clark to really step in and, and become that next player. And then, of course, Jabir Cox, maybe he can – I mean, from what we've been hearing, he's looking good. Let's get caught up with some of these uh, comments real quick. Desmond, uh, Iron Man says, yeah, good pickup for us this offseason. Because he was referring to when you were talking about uh, – both Brandon Cooks and Stephon Gilmore. So, yes, uh, I think everybody in the NFL thinks that that was very uh, uncharacteristic, like for the Dallas Cowboys in the offseason. Tommy Montoya says, what's up, Henry? Good afternoon, bro. DC for <laughs> live. Man, I love it, man. What's good, You're, Tommy? <laughs> tra- uh, Tavis Banks, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Gave you a little shout-out. Uh, Iron Man says, Gilly and Cooks going to help the youngsters. Yes, he is, right? Um, what up, HTM? Glad I I could catch this live feed, man. That's big tech, big ticks, big ticks, Dallas, man. I love that. I love to see this, man. You, you bring- <laughs> Salute to you, my boy. Yeah, man. You really brought out your crowd, man. <laughs> Gee, the young linebackers have potential, just not proven. Yeah, and and listen, you know that's why I, I would I've been very critical of Leighton Vanderis, right? But you know I I always grade Leighton Vanderis on a curve because he's playing out of position. When Leighton Vandres made his all pro selection, he was an outside linebacker. They have asked him to play majority yep. on the inside. You know, they tried to make Green Dot, it did not work, so they gave it to J. Ron Curse. So, you know, even with Leighton Vandres, I give him, you know, some grace because he is playing out of position. It's a different world, you know, trying to be the play caller, play in the middle, you know, get everybody organized and lined up, opposed as a C ball, get ball. That's two different worlds. So I, I still give him, you know, some grace with that. But for for Damone Clark and Devin Harper, like they're athletic, they're fast, they just need reps. You know what I mean? So I I feel comfortable with the young guys. And if this was if this was maybe you know the offense and it was still killing more in charge of the offense, you know I would I might have some questions. But I trust Dan Quinn and how he's been preparing the defense these last couple of years. That is for sure, man. He has been definitely be doing a great job. Uh, facts on the guard is still questionable. This is by Tavis Banks. So. He's saying the guard, the guard position is still kind of iffy there. So he was there with Harv right there. O line is so, is solely dependent on health. I agree, and that's the issue we're gonna have, man. Can we trust? Can we trust Tyrone Smith to be healthy? That's, I mean, that's that's the issue. Even on East West football, we we're talking about this, you know, especially during the playoffs, right, Kendall? I believe, right, because we even like Kendall uh, seeing the Cowboys. It was. It seemed like a a musical chair at the at the second cornerback position, office yeah. uh, of, of um opposite of Trayvon Diggs, and a yeah. uh, musical chair with the offensive line. So, uh, yeah, we can kind of see what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Big Tex does. Uh, wouldn't be Luke crazy Luke. is Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith managed to stay healthy all year. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think he will. He hasn't. Listen, he hasn't played a full season. I think it was like two, I think yeah, I think it was like 2015. But you know, I do expect him to, you know, play more. You know, I don't know what it is, but you know, once your money is tied to how many games you play, I, I just be finding it crazy. Folks just be finding ways to be on the field. They look a little <laughs> younger, look a little stronger. But you know, yeah. <laughs> but hey, but to to piggyback on your point about the offensive line being dependent on Tyron Smith's health, you know. That's why I said if you brought him back, because I was one of the guys trying to push old, old Tyron off a cliff. You know, I, I was one of the guys to try to get him out the door. But since they brought him back, knowing that he has not played a full season in what, 15, that's what, eight years? Going on eight yep. years? Eight years. Yeah, you're supposed to have a, a, a good, viable backup plan. 
whether that is, hey, I'm going to move Tyler Smith back to left tackle, I'm going to have a fire-ass backup guard, or I'm going to have this super good, dependable swing tackle I can just plug and play and nobody else has to move. So, you know, we'll have to find that, you know, for Dallas right now. I think they made some strides to do that, right? You know, they, they're very high on Walesco being a swing tackle right now. He's gotten reps at both left tackle and right tackle right now uh, during OTAs. You know, they brought in guys like T.J. Bass, no one would move to a zone scheme. He was the number one rated zone blocking offensive lineman in the NCAA the last two years going. And then, you know, you think about these other other guys that you could possibly uh, see some reps from. I think you can – I trust everybody not named Josh Ball. That's the one guy <laughs> on the team I trust. You know, I don't. I wouldn't trust him, you know uh, – I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trust Josh Ball to do anything for me. I don't even know why he's on the team still. But, you know, uh, yeah, I got, I got faith in the offensive line we, we may not have you know superior you know like a superior starter deal but i do think that we got some guys you can plug and play you can survive for a little while i, I think, mean, I think about, moving moving back to the cornerback position my, my fault jerry move back to oh, the cornerback position. um i've been listening to a lot of y'all cowboys content creators all, all season but one thing a lot of y'all have not mentioned <clears throat> it's kind of going on the radar jordan lewis is returning I've always been a big uh, Jordan Lewis fan out of Michigan. He's playing the slot. So now you have Stephon Gilmore on one side, Trayvon Diggs. You move um, Lewis inside. And I think your fourth corner is the Deron Bland. I believe, is it Bland or? We gotta, yeah, yeah. You got to invert that now because Deron Bland nope. won that job. Yep. Right, right. But I thought, okay, but Lewis, Lewis would be the veteran. So we got to see how that play out there in the training camp and whatnot. But what, what I'm saying is Jordan Lewis was playing some good ball last year before he did get hurt. For the Cowboys or whatnot, so I think and now with y'all having Gilmore and Diggs on two opposite sides, Diggs wasn't getting a lot of targets last year. But so what them targets either can go to Gilmore side or so somebody Diggs going to have a lot more opportunity to make plays this year with Gilmore being because Gilmore's locked down. And for trust me, I know he's with the Patriots for three years. He was real mm-hmm. good. For, I, I I don't want I, I, that's a conversation for another day. Gonna get in that we should have brought him back. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we're doing pretty good. I like I like the kid we just got out of Oregon, uh, Chris Gonzalez. I think we're gonna be all right there. But I like the kid um, too. Yeah, yeah. Let's see how he match up against CD Lamb and um, a week on October the first on that Sunday. But yeah, I really think that Jordan Lewis uh, bringing and uh, him coming back is really gonna help out that defense. Cause now y'all cornerback room last year, I think it was a it was a negative. Y'all got a lot more depth now at cornerback. I agree with you about the depth at at cornerback at this point. Because I, I am gonna push back on this. Deron Bland had five interceptions from the slot spot last year, and you know, and he didn't start the season. Yeah, he came yeah, he out of nowhere too. Came, came out of nowhere, and and they played him outside. They played him inside. He's uh, a solid six foot compared to Jordan Lewis, who's <laughs> about five eight, five nine. So I think it's it's I think at the start of the season is going to be Deron Bland's job to lose that starting slot corner. But hey, well, you talk about going four deep. There's not a fourth corner in the NFL that's better than Jordan Lewis. Like you talk about just just going you going can, forward. You can never have too many good corners. You, you can, can never have too many good. You can ne- you can never have too many good corners. So you know, like yeah. And then if you just look at the um the corner, you just look at the defensive back room as a whole. You look at the safeties too. You got J. Ron Curse. You got Malik Hooker. You know, you got Donovan Wilson. You know, coming back. You got Izzy who can play both uh corner and play safety. Shout out to Izzy, uh, friend of the show. But um. You got really, you got really good versatile talent. You got guys that can do a whole bunch of things at different positions. So we went from having a secondary that was a bit of a weakness. We saw that there was like seven different cornerbacks that got snaps at uh at opposite of Trayvon Diggs last year from Molens. You know, we even uh, brought in the boy that used to play for the Vikings. What was his name? Xavier Rhodes. Xavier Rhodes. Uh, we we uh had my boy Kendall Kendall Joseph Sheffield. out there. Sheffield. Kendall. Like uh Nation Wright got some yeah, burn Sean out Wright. there. Yeah, no, of course Anthony Brown was playing out there before he got hurt. They moved on uh, the run bland to the outside for a little bit. So there were like seven different cornerbacks that played on the opposite side of Trayvon Diggs last year, and they weren't really happy with the results from anybody. So I'm glad that they finally got that because teams listen when Anthony Brown first got hurt, right? When he got hurt end of the season, he was the most targeted cornerback in the NFL at the time. No other cornerback had as many targets as Anthony Brown did before he got injured. 
So, you know, that, that was a reason. You were not trying to throw to Trayvon Diggs. You, and, hell, by the time he got hurt, you weren't trying to throw at Deron Bland. That man was taking everything away. <laughs> the, the game the game I remember about Anthony Brown, which I think got Cowboys still living to this day, I think I want to say it was two Thanksgivings, away, two Thanksgivings ago against the Raiders and Derek Carr. Yep. And he got called. He kept getting called. Now, some of them were crazy mm-hmm. calls. But um, he like I think that's ever since then. I was I always like, bro. I think that was pretty solid corner. But I think Cowboys Tuesday still. I think is he still a free agent, Anthony Brown? I ain't heard nobody something. He's an agent, but you know he had ruptured his Achilles, so I don't yeah. know what he is to sign with anybody just okay. right now. Yeah, but I think that game about two about two years ago. I think the game went in overtime and the Raiders won it. I was mm-hmm. like everybody. Yeah, he just kept. I know. I think he had at least about three or four calls that game. So I'm like, that that was crazy. Yes, the infamous uh, just lob it up and just get the penalty, right? I mean, yeah. that was that was Derek Carr's little sneaky way of 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 moving the ball because the Raiders, let's just be honest, they're not a good team and uh, they're still not a good team. Tavis Banks, Forniak is a key at guard with laughing emoji and a fire emoji, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Now, let me know because I've I, I've heard a lot of people. I, I know some people that say that Forniak should be this. Play, uh, should be playing center for the Cowboys. What do you think of Matt Fournier? Serviceable rotational office alignment. I do not think he has starter strength or pedigree right now. You know, I wouldn't mind him having to relieve somebody, you know, maybe a game or two, but I don't trust him to be my starting center. I don't trust him to be my starting guard, you know. But, you know, I'm not saying he's a horrible guy, but I'm just saying there's better options right now. Tyler Smith. It's gonna it's gonna be a better left guard this year than he is. You know what I mean? Like right now, be honest, is gonna be a better starting center than him right now because he he already knows the protection, he already knows the snap count, he already has the familiarity with what we want to do offensively. So I think Forniak, you know, good rotational piece, plug and play, you know, in in case of emergency, break glass in case of emergency kind of guy. But you know, I don't want him to start. I get it. I get it. So, Jose Banks says, let's go, D.C. for life, man. We love it, man. Uh, didn't we lose someone from the practice squad, and he ended up being a starter for another team, Big Texas Dallas? Uh, is he talking about that 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 nose tackle that the Cowboys uh, – Ridgeway? R- Ridgeway, right? Yeah, to yeah, the we- Washington Commanders. Yeah, that was my boy, too. He from he played at Arkansas, so I really he had – He did play at Arkansas. Him. And he did, and he did start. And he goes, I think we're good at linebacker. I trust Quinn. He, uh, that's also by Big Tex Dallas. Uh, Damien, right? He's 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 a part of the East West and the Cowboy cast. He goes, I don't, I don't. Well, okay, okay, okay. Hold on. I Micah is a linebacker. LVE, the Mon, the Mon, Jabril. Plus, you added Land. Okay. He says, I'm I'm guessing he's saying that we're good at. We're good. Linebacker. Yeah. I think we're set. Plus, we don't utilize our linebackers a lot if you look at it. So, Damien, exactly. yeah, he, he that is pretty. Uh, I think you have something going on right here for raffle entries. Oh, yeah, man. For anybody who does, does not know, we are doing a mega giveaway over here at HTM Sports. There's going to be three winners. Uh, the first place winner is going to receive a Dallas Cowboy home game ticket to see the Dallas Cowboys destroy the Philadelphia Eagles live and nice. in person. Uh, that first place ticket will have a seat assigned to it, so you can kick back, relax, enjoy your cowboy reader. You know, just chill out and enjoy the game. The second place winner is going to get a ticket to the same game for general mission standing room area, and then the third place winner is going to either get a Dallas Cowboy jersey or a PlayStation Four. Nice. And to, and to okay. enter into the raffle, and it's HTM 10, Sports. That's your lot. That's your 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 podcast, right? Or yeah, HTM okay. Sports is uh it's the podcast. Oh, uh, my name is Henny Demore, so you know that's that's what its abbreviation okay. is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, for anybody who wants to enter, you can either cash app ten dollars or ten dollars per entry. We're gonna run it all the way to August the first. And because we're now monetized over here at the liquor store, you can either send a super chat or a super sticker. Nice. That's awesome. That's always good to hear. Uh, we lost and someone on the offensive line in the practice squad. Does anyone know his name? Big text by Big Text Dallas. Mm, I don't know anybody that we lost. I don't think no. I don't know anybody either. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. I don't remember an offensive lineman. I mean, we've been. More, I I know I'm, I'm. I'm with Henny. I want to get Josh Ball out of there. I mean, I wish somebody would pick him up. You know what I mean? Or trade for him. Right. 
<laughs> if LV can stay healthy, I'm fine with him in the middle. Okay. Uh, I uh, Damien says, I think we should do fine this season. Ju there's just a lot of tension on the offense. Uh, we've been seeing that, man, especially with mainstream media. Henny, have, what do you have to say about mainstream media when they're bashing the Cowboys and Dak? I mean, they, they're what they're supposed to do. You know, we're, <laughs> we're, the, we're, the, we're the biggest, you know, we're the biggest fan base. We get the most clicks and views. So, you know, it, it's more money in, you know, creating clickbait little articles and, you know, hot takes about the Cowboys and he's actually giving, you know, analytical breakdowns about what a, a team should do, so on and so forth. So, you know, they're going to do what they do. You know, we knew media, we ain't tripping on it. I, I did kind of skip a little bit uh, ahead. I was under the impression Tyron Smith was a superhero. The guy who wore a knee brace <laughs> on his arm. Uh, that, <laughs> I remember that. That's a true statement. Yeah. Now, yeah. uh, what do you say? Now, Bland got that that on lock so yeah people are with you saying that he is the, he is the slot guy hey henny uh that's regina hey what's up with you miss green thank you for tapping in and uh nothing bland about bland i love that and mm -hmm. talk henny uh bass was the steal <laughs> yeah man tj bass is, is good man if he was a better athlete he would have definitely been a been like a mid-round pick what do you think Oh, oh, you're you're actually responding to this. Oh, thank you. Uh, third oh, and yeah. uh, third and Brown. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a good he's, one. That's he's good right. One. And he goes, yeah, Ridgeway. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Ridgeway got cut because he he beat up McGovern at practice. <laughs> oh, he did McGovern bad. <laughs> and Travis Banks, he did laughing out loud. Man, I love this. Yep, they had uh a tussle in Big Tex. It really did. That old line man went to the Colts, I think. Um, Desmond and then Brian Bradford Collins, question mark. Oh, he's talking about Aviante Collins. He's still with the Dallas Cowboys. He's, he's still a, with us. He, yeah, he's, he's still with and, the Cowboys. And he's the guy that should have beat out Josh Ball because I watched with my own two eyes him outplay that man during the entirety of preseason, and they still rolled Josh Ball big goofy that, ass out there. That was so weird. I will say this. He did look sharp in the preseason. Why didn't he get the chance? I know. Then? I was saying the same I thing. I don't I have no I, earthly idea. You know what? I, I think it has a lot to do. And I think, you know, I, I think the final word said it too with Brian Broaddus. They had a lot of issues with coaching staff picking their favorite players. It was weird. Like the situation that they were having. I'm like, what did you just play the best player? And I, I thought that was just kind of weird that I, I think I, I got that kind of vibe from Avion Collins, man. I thought he was way better than Josh Ball. It says, Mr. Jenna Green said, what do they think about po the politics? Hey, that's that's one of the things that played into it. You yeah. know, think about well, think about it. Like, just look at some of these players that we know now are good. They did not get a fair opportunity under previous coaching regimes. Look at Donovan Wilson. Like Donovan Wilson had been on this team for a very long time, and it was not until Dan Quinn got here and got him on the field that he got a chance to blossom, right? Then we we all knew, you know, that Tony Pollard had some talent. It took, you know, it took um, killing more years to utilize him. It, it, it took him to the last year of his rookie deal before he got major uh, snaps and opportunity to, you know, impact the offense so it happens you know sometimes guys get into the doghouse with certain coaches and they don't ever get out of it or they don't get out the doghouse till that person leaves that's horrible it is horrible it, what is this it's uh it's too easy says no more Keller more the stars about to shine the season let's go dc for life uh yes sir because ball was drafted and you know steven yeah i, I oh, think yeah I mean, it's just a it's just the Jones thing. They 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 have too much loyalty sometimes to these coaches, and uh, you you already said that one. They said the old offensive line coach had his favorites. Yep, he didn't even like Tyler Smith. That's my point, man. We I think there's, a, and what I think I don't know if Jerry's gonna bring it up, but we'll Filman. go back. Yeah, Philman, I hated that dude, and hate is a bad word, <laughs> but come on, man. Not only that, Malik Davis. They talked about Malik Davis, too. Mm -hmm. He should have ran the ball in that Niner game in the playoffs. I don't know why they didn't do that. I honestly think if they run the ball with Malik Davis, we might win that game. I mean, if you don't go shotgun second and two 
in the red zone with under two minutes left, I'm sure you win the game. HTM, second and two on the 18-yard line, and they pass the ball. But Kellen, no Moore, Kellen Moore is a guru, guys. Please. <laughs> yeah, right. I got a, I got a question. What's up? How, this is for all y'all, too. I mean, all y'all Cowboys. Y'all Cowboys, man. I'm Jerry Ryan, the pound out. I'm the Patriots fan. How much pressure do you think is on the Cowboys this year, seeing that the Eagles in the division just went to the Super Bowl, albeit they didn't win it, and the moves they made all offseason, they got them to the Super Bowl. How much pressure do y'all think is on the Cowboys this year to at least, like, make it to the Super Bowl? I don't even think, I don't, I don't think NFC Championship game is good enough because I think you got, you're looking up to the Eagles in the division. And then the second part, second part of the question, how close, if close at all, do you think y'all are to the Philadelphia Eagles? Can I start? And I'll start yeah. with the last part. Yeah. Philadelphia Eagles have not beaten, have not won a game in Dallas since 2017. Let's go. They have not beaten Dak Prescott since 2019. So, you know, like in terms of the Philadelphia Eagles, both of their Super Bowl runs, you know, coincide with the Dallas Cowboys having their, their best offensive player suspended or injured. 2017, Ezekiel Elliott missed six games in the middle of the season after the Dallas Cowboys started five and three. Dak Prescott at that point in the season had 16 passing touchdowns or only four interceptions and was on track to, you know, eclipse totally what he did his rookie his rookie season. So, you know, the Ezekiel Elliott in uh suspension happened. The offense floundered. We were not the same. We were not able to keep pace with them. And that was the only game that the Philadelphia Eagles have won in Dallas, you know, since Dak Prescott's been here. The one game where Zeke Elliott didn't play in 2017. Right. Then when you look last year, you know, we lost, you know, in Philadelphia with Cooper Rush. I, I'm pretty sure Dak Prescott can help us win that game. So, you know, like, I'm not too concerned about the Philadelphia Eagles. We beat them. Like, we're 8-3 and three when Dak Prescott plays against them. 9-3 and three when Zeke Elliott was here. So, you know, I'm not too concerned about the Eagles overall because their best, their, best, their best team, we always beat them. We always beat the Eagles. But the game know, that stands out to me is the one on Monday Night Football. I want to say about two years ago, Jalen Hurts threw a pick six and Trayvon did. I think it was going to. Uh, I was live at that game. That's that's oh, that, yeah. was my, that was the first game, my, my first Cowboys game. It was be, it was a beautiful night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two picks in that game, didn't he? I believe he is. <laughs> he, he, yeah. he threw two inceps. He got the first one was to Anthony Brown. He overthrew a ball that might that could have possibly been a touchdown, but he Hurst overthrew. Has struggled <laughs> historically against the um, Cowboys the last couple of years uh, since he's been with Philly. Yeah, he only has one win, and that was against Cooper Rush. He could not beat Andy Dalton. He could not beat um, uh, Dak Prescott. So you know, like he has not fared too well against the Dallas uh, the Dallas Cowboys. So, Henny, is it safe to say that that the Dakota Prescott owns the Philadelphia Eagles? Mayor Philly, <laughs> he, Mayor Philly, the heat of Mayor Philly, man. Uh, I love it, man. And what's crazy about it is, you know, you don't see Dallas Cowboys fans talking crazy about, you know, the 49ers. We don't beat the 49ers too often. So, you know, I ain't never seen a Dallas Cowboys fan talking crazy about the 49ers. But, you know, time in and time out, I will see a Philadelphia Eagles fan talking crazy and calling a quarterback that they cannot beat, you know, trash and sorry. So if Daddy if Daddy Prescott is so bad, if Dak Prescott is trash, that makes the Philadelphia Eagles uh, dumpster juice. You know, you, you got to be a step below trash. Dak Prescott is trash because you can't beat that boy. Well said. Tavius Banks did want to say Jalen Tolbert is out of the doghouse. Uh, something we got to get ready for. No more confusing routes for, right, uh, for the wide receivers. That's what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. What up, Henny? Uh, I don't know if you were able to say what up to him. Uh, they have too, many, too much loyalty unless your name is Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> That's a good one. I don't think I've ever heard that one. Javier, you're right. Uh... Of course, more more shout outs to you, Hen. Indeed. And hey, shout out to Nana K. She is actually an Eagles fan, but she always shows love and come oh. through and talking crazy in the chat box. So shout out to her too, man. She said all we had to do was beat the 49ers. And yes, you are right. We have struggled the last couple of years uh seasons against the 49ers. But you know, we do not we do not struggle against the Philadelphia Eagles. We're gonna give a round, round of applause, okay. It's hard to give credit where credit is due sometimes, right? Uh, I, I I guess James and Taylor, there's a thunderstorm there, Henny. Well, yeah, y'all be safe out there, man. 
Same as every year, Regina Green. Don't don't say that. <laughs> I I guess I don't really understand it, right? Uh, it's, I think she would. I think she would talk about us beating up beating up on uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's Dak all because there's no more to blame. It's oh, okay, okay. I guess when they when I guess Kendall had asked you how big was this season, right? Uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, I guess he's responding to that. Man, the comment section is lit up here. Uh, I know. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Stephen White, hey, Uvo, Jerry, and Javier. Man, he's on. Salute, salute, Stephen. Uh, yes, sir. Hey, he knows he he, he even said Henny too. He get he look at that Stephen White Henny with the fire sign. Um, let's see here. People are just saying, speak it, man. Jerry is a liar. He said it's embarrassing the amount of money he paid to win. Another Super Bowl, but the reluctantly to pay players and shy away every season. Do you think that's fair to say that? Of course. Because listen, Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys try to tell us about pie and salary cap like we don't have tools to go and check the salary cap. We all can listen. You don't even have to be a, a salary cap guru. You can there are sites designed. You can go see how much a team save by resigning a player how much a team can save by restructuring a player you can even you know project what the market will be next year so you know if you want to just to put in the time and effort to come the coming fan can become well you know rounded in in capology so you know for him to sit here when we know that we have cap room where can, can create cap room to make these signings and still you know bid against yourself that that's what they did against Dak Prescott right if they had signed Dak Prescott when he first came up for a contract you know, he would have probably made $29, $30 million. You know, instead, they waited two they waited two seasons to get a deal done with Dak Prescott and end up paying him $40 million a year. You know, it's the same thing, you know, with with a lot of these, with a lot of these contracts, right? There is a there is a pattern of, of players having to hold out, you know, against the Dallas Cowboys in order to get a second contract. Like because listen, they franchise tagged Demarcus Lawrence twice. He had to he had to threaten you know getting surgery before the season started to get his contract. And Zach Martin had to hold out for a day, right? They said they looked outside and he see his car. They instantly gave him a contract, right? We know that Ezekiel Elliott had to take his ass to Cabo. So you know, like the Dallas Cowboys have a track record of you know bidding against their own players, you know trying to get below market value contracts out of their players when. The smart teams, they go ahead and sign their guys as soon as humanly possible because they know every year the salary cap goes up. So the sooner that you get, you know, a deal done with one of these key players, like you can make them the highest paid player now and they won't be even in the top 10 like a year or two down the line. Look at Dak Prescott, right? He was in, he was like one of the highest paid uh, quarterbacks in the league. And then now he's what? Like the 10th highest paid quarterback in the league now. They ain't this contract ain't happened that long ago. And then when you really look at how these salary caps are broken down, they say Dak Prescott is a 40 million dollar year quarterback, right? What year has Dak Prescott cost the Dallas Cowboys 40 million dollars? It hasn't happened. First year of that contract, he was making like 17. The year after 19, we restructured this year. He only made like 23 million dollars. So you know, like you can, there are plenty of ways you can manipulate the salary cap. There are plenty of ways you can clear cap space. Like none of the stuff that that's the, the front office tried to sell us on is actually factual. So, you know, that's why I think they get a bad rep because they know they can make, they can clear salary cap. They know they can sign these players. They know that you can prorate contracts and do this, that, and the third. So that's why I think they get a lot of pushback and shout out to uh, the King G. He said, keep this good content coming, my brother. Let me get a little raffle entry. I got you, my boy. Let me get you added in here. Mm -hmm. King G, you now have... Let me see how many you got, King G. Let me find you on here. You have three. You now have three raffle entries, my boy. So salute to you. Uh, look, JJ says, uh, put put it on, HCN. Put it on, right? Uh, <laughs> Cowboys are always pressured to win the Super Bowl. Why is it every year our year, Henny? I want to hear it from you. You said why is it every year? Because listen, every team, every team that's a contender thinks that they only talk about it with the Cowboys. <laughs> I'm sure. Hey, listen, I'm sure the Patriots when they had Tom Brady, they felt like they're gonna win the Super Bowl every damn year. You know, I feel like the Kansas City Chiefs fans are saying they're gonna win another another Super Bowl. 
I feel the Eagles, you know, even though they only have one championship in 60 years, feel like they can win a Super Bowl this year. I think that every contending team feel like this year is their year. They only they only criticize the Dallas Cowboys for saying that stuff. They only criticize the Cowboys, but you're supposed to feel like your team, when you have a good team well, all together, can win a Super Bowl. One thing that we know, you know, the Cowboys are America's team, and you know, some people say the Patriots were America. Cowboys and Patriots are two of the most richest fan bases. And their fans are kind of similar, whatnot. Boston, that's a sports town. You got the Red Sox, you got the Celtics, you got the Patriots. And Dallas, you know, it's just Dallas. You know, it's the, it's, it's the Cowboys, a big fan. Those are two big fan bases, two, two of the most famous and richest fan bases. And they're, and they're uh, I guess every year, if you don't get to the Super Bowl, it's, it's a failure. It's, it's Super Bowl bus, really. Mm-hmm. That, well, that's, that's the mindset. And listen, I feel the same way. You know, the only one team, you know, can win a Super Bowl every year. So, you know, every season, there's only one team that actually had a successful quote-unquote season, right? But, you know, like, you still have to make steps and strides to improve year to year to be in position to win a Super Bowl. We know when Mike McCarthy first got here, he inherited one of the worst defenses in the National Football League. He had a quarterback coming back from injury, this, that, and the third. You know, so when he first got here, we ended up, well, what we end up with like seven and nine, six and ten, something, something abysmal. The year after that, we won, we won twelve games, and you know, uh, made the playoffs. The year after that, we won twelve games and then won a playoff game. So you know, you actually see consistent improvement year in and year out for the Dallas Cowboys, at least in the short time that Bob McCarthy <laughs> has been here. Right? It's not like we make made made the playoffs, then we missed the playoff for two years and we struggle to get back. Like you actually are in position to build on what you did the year prior. So, you know, that's why you should feel comfortable, you know, now that you got a company coaching here. Remember, uh, they, they used to call uh, Jason Garrett, Mr. Eight and eight. Like how you, you can't make the playoffs going eight and eight year in a year out. So again, you know, to, to caveat of what you said, as far as the pressure and Kendall talking about, is there pressure, right? Um, this is my thing. Go, let's say, 12 and 5 again with the team that you have now. Because we got to think all the people we drafted, all the people we got in free agency, right? And now think about the free agent rookies that we got and drafted free agent rookies. We got Land, we got Moron Cropper, we got Jordan, we got Hunter. Like these guys are good. TJ Bass. Like these guys are they they might make this team. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest, right? So when you have a roster like this, CD Lamb, you got Cook, you got Gallup, you got Vaughn, Malik Davis, you got Rojo, you got Pollard. Pollard's not even a running back, he's a weapon. Mm-hmm. And then you got all the defense. Yeah, there's pressure, man. Let me tell you how much pressure there is, though. Mike McCarthy fired coaches, right? Of Mike course. McCarthy is calling plays now. What does that tell you? Dan Quinn is coming back again. He gave up another head coach position to come back. There's a lot of pressure. And Mike McCarthy knows that, that he has a talented roster. And if he don't make it happen, I don't think he's going to be there next year, even if he goes 12-5 and five and doesn't win anything. Well, I'm I, just I, saying. That's the pre- this I'm just saying that this is a huge problem. This is a, a talented roster, man. Yeah, but, you know, look, it's a talented roster. Listen, when you have a good team, there's always pressure. But, you know, what's the pressure for the Buffalo Bills to win to win a Super Bowl, right? What, what's, the, what's the pressure? You're supposed to have a top three. They say that they say that Josh Allen, the second-best quarterback in the league, right? Let them tell it. HM, right? they ain't got a star on their helmet. I mean, I guess that's the point. Like the the media creates this pressure. Like, how exactly. the hell are you gonna sit here and tell me what I, what the hell I'm supposed to do? I'm yeah. we're the only team that you cover. So you know that's 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 sort of my point. Like every contending team has pressure. You know, a lot of this other stuff, you know, is you know, is fugazi. It's artificial. Like these these people always hold themselves to a high standard. Like Mike McCarthy is a Super Bowl um, winning coach. He knows he knows the responsibilities of of managing a roster and getting the best out of a team and competing in the playoffs and getting guys prepared to prepared to play. He ain't no he ain't no Rudy Pooh. This man one of the winningest coaches in the NFL right now. You know Dak Prescott. You know hands down a top ten quarterback right now in, in the league. You know you don't think he holds himself to a high standard. You know this man was a fourth round pick. You don't think he worked his ass off to be where he is right now. He ain't had nothing handed to him. 
You know, you look around our roster, all these guys that had to fight to make it into the league or were, were low drafted guys. They, they they probably put more pressure on themselves than the fans do. So, you know, I don't I think like this added pressure from the media is, is artificial. Them guys already hold themselves accountable. The front office already holds them guys accountable. Mike McCarthy already holds these guys accountable. So, you know, there is pressure, but there's always pressure when you're playing for titles. When, you know, when much is expected, you know, much is given. They gave Mike McCarthy the ability to call plays, something they did not do for Jason Garrett. He he fought to get the play calling back. They did not. They let that man go out sad. Mike McCarthy got an opportunity. Jason Garrett never did. He got the opportunity to call plays. He, you know, he was probably the guy that pushed to get Brandon Cooks. He's probably the guy that pushed the, the draft uh, Shoemaker. You know, so I think they're they're giving him the, they give him enough rope to either hang himself or they give him enough rope to climb his ass <laughs> up there, you know, yeah. and and solidify himself at the coach of the future. So pressure, yeah, there's always pressure, but you know, I don't think they're this this like oh oh my god, the world's going to end if this that and the third. Like hell, it takes outside of having a good team, it also takes look. We we talk about oh uh, the difference between Philadelphia winning and losing their game. Ain't nobody even really touched Jalen Hurts. He fumbled the ball away. Right. What what if he hold on to hold on to that ball? They might not they might not lose that game. What about Matthew Stafford? He threw an interception right to the 49ers and they dropped it. So my question is if Mike McCarthy goes 12 and 5 and loses in the divisional round again, does he come back? It it really depends on how they lose. No, no. I'm, they no, lost. I, they lose. I, I, no, I mean it really depends on how that plays off. It's his no, coaching. You can't oh, no. come on, ACM. Oh, no, no. Come on, uh, ACM. No. You gotta hear me out. There's too many factors. Come does, he on ha- now. Does, he, does he have his full cup midfield of players? Yes, everything. So he has everything. So he has everything. everything. 12 and 5 loses the I mean it depends. Do we lose 50? Do we lose 50 to 49? <laughs> it it depends. Yeah. Does it, it matter? If you're the offensive play caller and then you put up 40 points in a in a in a, in a playoff game. You know, do, do we lose? Do we lose a shootout? Do we lose forty-two to forty? Like that stuff matters. Like, like hell, how can you bring Dan Quinn back and give him the team if it, if the defense the reason we lose the playoff game? Like this is gonna have to matter. It, we'll have to lose in the fashion like we lost last year in order for Michael Carter to lose his job. It will have to be some shit like twelve to nineteen again, in my opinion, because that was that was where the defense showed up. Mike McCarthy, you're the head coach. You're supposed to be the offensive guru. The offense didn't show up. But you know, if it's something where my, if it's something where Dak Prescott throws five touchdowns and the offense is going crazy and the defense can't stop a nosebleed, then of course they bring Mike McCarthy back. Right. right. Go ahead. Okay. Because um, listen, I just think I just think the circumstances matter. At least in yeah. the eyes of Jerry Jones, it does. Right now, HTM. Um, how do you see the NFC East like rank from top from, from the best team to the worst team? We're, 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 and just just rank rank the teams in the NFC. Cause we had the draft, you had the offseason. I think the Giants had a pretty good offseason, good draft for agency. I'm like with Washington, uh, Washington. They're they're um they're all in on Sam Howell. I'm not, but they are. But um uh, and the Eagles, they made a lot of moves in the draft and for agency. What now? We obviously seen what the Cowboys do. Rank the team, rank the NFC East one to four. Man. You know, you know, I'm very um biased. You know, I, I already think we got a better team. You know, well, take, in, take bodies and up. Take the bodies and up. Take, take I mean, bodies for real, like I, I, freak, I think we're a better team than the Eagles. Cause you know, okay. you go up and down. People will, will say that that Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott off after one season. But when I point out that Dak Prescott has a better career completion percentage, better passer rating, you know, better QBR, you know, has higher, you know, career uh, marks in passing touchdowns, yardage. And people be forgetting Dak Prescott in terms of completion percentage, pass ratio, touchdown, and interception ratio is top 10 in league history. Right. And, and if you want to leave out the old school quarterbacks that were, uh, you know, playing what, what you could blow, you know, blow up a play, you could dislodge the ball from the wide receiver, even among, you know, modern quarterbacks, all his marks are in the top 10. So, you know, like Dak Prescott, you know, is, is a very, is a very good, is a very good quarterback. I don't think that Jalen Hurts, you know, as a passer has, has made it there yet. So I would take Dak Prescott right now over Jalen Hurts. You know, when you look at the wide receiving core, you know, it's it's very close. You know what I'm saying? You know, they got A.J. Brown, who was a second-team All-Pro. We got C.D. Lamb, who was a second-team All-Pro. You know, we got – they got Devontae Smith, you know, who's a 1,000-yard receiver. We got Brandon Cooks, who's a 1,000-yard receiver. You know, if you go three deep, I think Michael Gallup is, is a better wide receiver than Quez Watkins. So, you know, if, even if you wanted to say it's a push, I think we got a slight edge there. I think they got a better tight end room. You know, with Dallas Goddard, and that's not really knowing what we got with Jake Ferguson and them. I think they got a better offensive line. 
but I think our cornerback rooms were better, we're better at corner, we're better at safety. You know, I think right now we got a better running back, uh, a better starting running back at least. I don't know if they're if they're need, I don't know what their other running backs gonna do. They don't stay healthy. I can't think the last time Penny played a full season. I can't think the last time Swift played a full season. So you know, I think I think overall we got more we got more uh, position groups that we top out at. You know, in terms of Dallas. So in my in my mind, it's Dallas, Philadelphia, the Giants, because I think they're a better overall roster right now than Washington. You know, because Daniel Jones is not a great quarterback, but I think he's better than Sam Howell. But I do like Washington's skill position better than I like their wide receiver better than the Giants. I like their wide receivers better than than the Giants. But you know, in terms of like overall, you know, in, in terms of like overall, I like their I like their tight end better for the Giants. I like their quarterback better than the uh than the Giants. I mean, better than the Redskins. I'm sorry, because yeah, I like I like the Giants uh, uh quarterback better than uh, Washington's. I like their tight end better uh, than Washington. You know, I like their. It's really hard, you know, because uh, I think it's sort of it's it's, it's close defensive tackle because they got some dogs there, but then they also got Dalvin uh, Dalvin Thompson, you know, up there with uh the Giants. So that's that's a, that's a hard one too. And then like hell, cornerback is is really is really up in the air because they got they got some young guys over over there now, you know, in Washington. But I, but I don't know, man. I, I think I I think I would trust just based on coaching alone. I think I would trust the Giants a little bit more than uh than Washington. King G says here, I want to hear from the Patriots fan how he views the Dallas Cowboys. Super Bowl contenders overrated. Where are we stuck against the rest of the NFC, et cetera? Well, um, I think y'all contenders. And as I mean, a big part of that NFC, I mean, yeah, the NFC is is real weak. You don't have to worry about um, Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners. Well, the Niners, they got Sam Darnold and they got, I mean, we've seen Kyle Shanahan do it with average quarterback. So I mm-hmm. actually think Sam, that's a sneaky good pickup for the Niners in getting Sam Darnold. Um, I do too. Seattle, I think they're gonna they're just gonna go up. They're gonna be better this year than what they were last year. Um, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is out of the NFC. You, so what y'all really don't I mean, yes, see what Kirk Cover, he never shows up. It's like the Cowboys own him since he's been. <laughs> see, he was in Washington, Minnesota. And another yeah. thing a lot of people that don't talk man. about. I'm tired of the disrespect on Trayvon D because every time he's went up against Justin Jefferson, he's really clamping down. Uh-huh. He really has nobody that everybody seems to go up or let it fly up on the radar. But he does. He really come from that. Nobody talks about that though. I don't know why. But I think. I mean, the Cowboys. I think they're a top. They're, they're one of the top teams in the NFC. I do. I do see that. Yes. Where you rank Dak Prescott? In the yeah. NFC or uh, the, overall? Overall, quarterbacks all all together. AFC, NFC. He a top ten quarterback. He top ten. I give him top ten. In the NFC? Yes. He's top. He's top three in the NFC. Top ten in the in the whole in the whole league. That's fair because you know I really don't see there are really not too many quarterbacks left in the NFC. Is, is it going to either be, be between Matthew Stafford, him, and Jalen Hurts, right? Well, now you got to throw Derek Carr into the Derek, equation. Derek, is Derek Carr? Do, do we even include Derek Carr? He's never had this defense. He's like, no, man. And he's, man. Playing, and he's going to be playing in the dome. So you don't know what Kirk Cousins you're going to get. So it's kind of hard to go there. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the the Vikings are down there in a rebuild at this point. They got rid of Delvin yeah. Cook, you know. They got rid of Adam Thielen, you know. Like, oh, uh, I don't really. They got rid of um. See, they they trying to get rid of the Neil Hunter, you know. They lost that linebacker, so I don't I don't really know what the hell the Vikings are expected to do this season. To be honest, my t- my surprise team at it, and it's not real surprise because they did make the playoffs. I think Seattle, that roster, the draft they just had. They beat up that defensive line of free agency. Um, do y'all play Seattle this year? We play Seattle, but you know, my surprise team is Detroit. I'm not buying the Detroit hype. Boy, oh, man, I, I, think, I think I think Detroit they really. The one, they were the number one offense in in, man, in not, the field last I'm year. Not, I'm not buying I, the Detroit listen, hype, man. Just peep this. Detroit, peep this, peep this. So, so let me ask you, what would it take for Detroit to to make the playoffs? Right, they just got to win the division, correct? Yes. All right, so in that division, the only viable option right now is who? Vikings. Green Bay. Green, so you you believe in Green Bay, Jordan Love, first first I year do. starting? I do. More, more I do. than you do? All right, but well, listen, I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this. Wide receiving, Detroit has a better wide receiving core. They got a better offensive line because they got a top three offensive line. People don't even talk about that. 
they got a better proven quarterback right now. I don't think Jared Goff is God or anything, but I think he's right now is like what quarterback 13, 14. He's hey, look, in. You think dude, Court Barry then who? Jordan Love. Matt, listen, listen. Why would why would get Jared Goff not be better than a quarterback hey, that doesn't play? We're we're gonna find out real quick. They play the Chiefs and the Seahawks the first two games. I don't even know why they did them boys like that. I'm just saying. Hey, 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 Tim. <laughs> hey, Tim, you say that, but I'm like, we're going to find out real quick, man. We're going to find out real quick. Man, that is crazy. But I agree with you with the Lions, man. I think I think they're going to be the dark horse that people are not really counting on. That I, and, and to me, in my opinion, I don't care what anybody says, I think Jamar Gibbs is going to be the difference, man. I think I, he... I honestly do. I honestly think he's going to be the guy that gets him that extra first down, that extra play, even if it's one or two, to get him to, you know, to score or whatever the, the final drives that they they couldn't get done, in my opinion. Now, the defense on the other side, I don't know, man. We're, that's that's a toss-up for me, though. But I think they are going to be a dark horse in the NFC, though, 100%. Man, I, li I like Detroit, man. You, you know, like, and listen, I'm not even – like a fan of anybody on that damn team. I ain't got no Kim folk over there, nothing. But I like I like the way they constructed right now. I just, I just like the way them boys uh, constructed because, man, you know you know they can score points. They should have a better defense right now. They should have yep. a decent running game because, like you said, they picked up Gibbs. I just don't see, you know, who else in, in that division is going to really – unless y'all just – unless y'all think that uh, the Bears is going to – you know, rise from the ashes and be this contender. I, I ain't buying the Jordan Love Green Bay thing right now. I don't think he got enough offensive. I don't think he got enough offensive firepower. When you got a young quarterback like that, man, you know you got to get you got to give him some skill position player that can make things happen that can win a little bit easier. You know what I mean? Like I don't think he had. I don't think he had the weapon of personnel outside outside of Christian Watson to get that to get that done. <laughs> Regina, she's awesome. She's, She's awesome. awesome, man. I like her. But for now, real quick, if Hertz can do it again, yeah, we are. <laughs> we really are. Any, I, I, before we, you know, man, we've had you. You need to come on the Cowboys. You, you do, I, man. I mean, we here he's just football. We try to talk about all NFL, but I got to ask you, man. What what team are uh, do you want to give? Um, I guess tap your uh, uh, or okay. What other NFL team right now do you say is as good as the Dallas Cowboys? More importantly. Will McClay in in acquiring team, uh, uh, you know, bringing in players and whatnot. Is there another team out there that you see out there that said, "Dang, they know what they're doing." What draft wise? Draft wise, uh, every, the whole the whole enchilada. Oh, that's tough, man. Let me see. But Will McClay's a master. Will McClay, Will, Will McClay is great. And with, with, well, you're just talking about like free agents, like like player acquisition. Ain't got to be through the ain't got to be through the draft, right? Let's talk about the draft, man. I mean, oh, just just drafting guys, okay? Just drafting guys. Damn, that's hard, man. That it's a good hard. question, right? It's, a, it's, it's a great question. It's it's a it's a great question, man. But um, let me see. <sighs> What's the question, Jerry? I asked him what other team out there in the NFL, right, is is doing like great drafting, like a great drafting franchise. Mm. It ain't the Patriots. Damn, you ain't had to shoot, shoot no. my ball. Oh, our last, like our last <laughs> few drafts, hold on, our last few drafts have been, we've been hitting. I think, oh. did, I think, I, look, I'll be real though. I think your only issue is trying to, you know, get get wide receiver help. I think like if you look at it, everything else, y'all found some quality corners, y'all found some quality offensive linemen. Of course, y'all find defensive players. I just think y'all have. You even found tight ends. Y'all, y'all have found a couple tight ends. I just don't know what it is, but whoever is evaluating the wide receiver position for y'all needs to be fired. <laughs> hey, we need we need a Steelers wide Bro. receiver. Um, I think uh, Pittsburgh is real good at draft. Steelers are real good at draft. Who, who said that? Look, look, look. Uh, well, King J, uh, Baltimore always draft well. Uh, that Chiefs, is true. Chiefs, the Chiefs, Chiefs. You know what? Yeah. They did Seattle. get they did get Nick Bowden. You know what? They did get Nick Bowden. He was a steal in the second round. So Baltimore, yeah. that, Baltimore, Baltimore struggles drafting wide receivers too, though. Yeah, Eagles are good at bringing in talent. Uh, Detroit's not a dark horse; they're straight up contender this year. Well, hold on, I don't know. I don't know if the Eagles are are great at at uh wide at uh at, at, at drafting. 
They they make moves, you know. They they trade for players. I yeah. am not ever going to let go of the fact that they passed on Justin Jefferson for Jalen Rager. Like I'm, mm. that was, I, that's pretty bad. You know, that was I mean, a bad one. Hey, J- <laughs> hey, JC said he'll tap in with y'all, man. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Uh, appreciate that, JC. Uh, Pittsburgh yeah. Bengals. Uh, Bengals took a while to get there, right? I mean, oh, yeah, but they. I I don't know when did the new when did the new uh front office get in place for the Bengals because they 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 ain't missing a little second because they went and got you know Burrow. they went, they got Burrow they put they, 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 Chase they, and they got they, Higgins they got Chase you got know they Bates. they got yeah I they, think Green Bay did pretty good drafting they they've done pretty good drafting uh, I don't know man that man, defense, what that, that, de- like that, that, that defense, defense is horrible. horrible it should be top five man because they've invested in that defense for Walker and like seasons plus yeah that's yeah yeah but uh, not they, top five and center not Baltimore good draft, I have to say Baltimore oh they, they said San, they said San Francisco I think that's a good one too yeah that JC, is a good one JC Cowboys Network says Baltimore I like uh, Baltimore draft picks aren't guaranteed that's why I ask you I mean because if you look at it the Cowboys they're they're full of them man I mean they're full of superstars that they got to resign man I mean it's it's no easy task and I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about Henny I mean the contracts that are coming up for Trayvon CD Lamb Micah Parsons I mean Cowboys are going to have to be uh, beot beotish Tyler um, beotish like- I, Aaron Steel. I so, mean how do you keep them let me tell you something for, what did I just say about the salary cap, man? You listen. We had imaginary friends growing up. That's really than, than the damn salary cap. So, that, so let me let me tell let me tell you let me tell you why. One extension from Dak Prescott saved the Dallas Cowboys between twenty six point two and thirty nine million dollars. They currently have twenty million dollars in free cap space right now, right? So you have ways in, in manipulating the salary cap to clear to clear about seventy million dollars. You wanted to. If you wanted to take to take everything to the extreme, there's guys you can get rid of Michael Gallup this year, next year. You if you uh, if you wanted yep. to and save about eight million dollars because we got built in that. So you know you got twenty million dollars right now. You can clear up you know damn near forty million dollars by getting the Dak Prescott extension done. You can get rid of Michael Gallup. You have enough money you know to pay everybody and their mama and then still get a free agent if you wanted to. Like theoretically, it's just depending on how long the Dallas Cowboys want want to push the ball down down the line. Hey, right. Henny, we just need you to send. We just need to send you to crunch the numbers for that man. Okay, let's yeah. do that. Let, let's yeah, like Henny, so they petition, can crunch the numbers. Petition, petition for it. Petition let's for go. It. That's funny. I think I think it's safe to say, right? The Baltimore has always been really good. I mean, they yeah. were. I think they're the uh, the OGs. Uh, I think, and they've been able to maintain a steady flow. Yep. But I mean, who else? Who else out there? What other team then, uh, Henny? Do you really put attention to? You know, I know you're a cowboy, but we we'll always had that team that we're always like, damn. In recent history, I think it's the Chiefs. No, because they 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 didn't been knocking shit out the out the park. Uh, that board. Uh, listen, I I stay about an hour and some change. From where uh where Mahomes was born, that boy from that boy was originally born in Tyler, Texas. That's just up the road road from here. So, you know, I, I've seen him play in college a lot. You know, uh, different things like that. So I, I like Patrick Mahomes. I just can't ever just sit, come out here and say I'm a Patrick Mahomes or Chiefs fan. But you know, I don't have any ill will to him until we play them boys. But you know, they they made moves. They've been aggressive in player acquisition. You know, they've been in contention for a long time. You know, he, ever since they really got Ed, Andy Reid, he he had them, you no know, competitive with with uh with Alex Smith. So you know, like that's a team that you know that I look at, and you know I think that they doing the damn thing. You know, they're always being conditioned as long as they keep their front office and their coaching staff together. So I like I like the Chiefs from what they from the, for what they do. You know, in in roster building and being competitive and things like. That. I think yeah, I think that draft last year is really good. They drafted a couple corners, um, Pacheco. Uh, they uh, drafted yeah. a linebacker. Yeah, they they drafted past. They they've yeah. been a pretty good um solid drafting team. And for them to be picking so high because they always close to the in Super Bowl and to still hit on these draft picks, that's good for them. Yeah, I mean they've been in they've been in the AFC Championship game how many years in a row? Like six, <laughs> like four. I want to say four or five at least. Uh, yeah, like four or yeah. five at least. Maybe maybe six. I don't know. It's, it's been. Let me see. 2018 was when uh Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, fact, Patrick Mahomes ain't never been. Nowhere, yeah, he ain't never been anywhere less than AFC Championship game. And, so, the, and the other thing we gotta say, man, about the Chiefs is what star receiver they got. Well, they don't have anybody now. <laughs> I'm no. just saying when they won this past year, 
I do I, like Rasheed Rice. They just drafted. Yeah, him. I'm, I'm like, saying they didn't have anybody really. I mean. I'm to be to be fair, because I'm not gonna gonna put the narrative like oh uh, like they had a collective group is what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, but I, I'm gonna say this: if he didn't miss, like he missed like two games, Juju Smith Schuster would have been a thousand yard receiver. I'm not I'm not saying that he's Jesus or anything, but you know they yeah. had one, they had one fringe number one. But you know, like he's he probably like a quality number two. You are right by it being like a collection of yeah of talent. I have no 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 go to guy. Yeah, so I, I do agree with that. I just want to give Juju some love. You know, people be calling him TikTok boy. <laughs> yeah, they be calling him TikTok boy and that little dancing dude and shit yeah. like that. This is a good question right here, and and I want to get your take on this. Uh, let let let's talk about the elephant in the room, right? That's Dak and and his contract. Uh, oh, that's a, <clears> that's, a, that's a simple question to answer. Uh, it takes two. To, it takes two to tango. Dak Prescott has no reason to go ahead and, and sign an extension with the Dak with the Dallas Cowboys. Like why? Like at this point in his career, like he's not rushing to the table. Like why, you know, go to the table now and, and take less money? He could wait till after the season is over, knowing that the Dallas Cowboys have no other option than to give him an extension. They can't cut him because of the amount of dead money. They can't trade him because he has no trade calls. Can veto where can veto any trade, yep. right? So you can't cut him. You can't trade him. You, they're not going to let him play on a cap hit of fifty nine million dollars. So he has all the power in this in these negotiations. He's going to wait till after the season is over, you know, come to the table with his demands, get the contract that he wants, you know, and he's gonna sit and then you know things will be done. But this there's, there's really not a reason for him, you know, to rush to the table. I mean, it's not like the Dallas Cowboys are gonna let him play for fifty nine million dollars next year. And that's what people I think that's what people will be for forgetting about. Dak Prescott can go out here and throw twenty interceptions this year. He's getting an extension. <laughs> they have no other choice. Is it time to? Is it time for the Cowboys to select a quarterback in the first round? Of course not. When you when you are competitive, you put your resources into staying competitive. If you think your quarterback is good enough, you know to uh, to compete with, you know you 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 use that first round pick to get an offensive lineman to get an offensive weapon, or if your defense is lacking, you use that to improve that, right? But you know there is not too many. There's not too many. You know times where you will go out there and use your first round pick to get a to get a quarterback where you still have one on the roster the chiefs did it but they already knew they were moving on from alex smith and then people talk about using a first round pick to get a quarterback like daniel jones was not a first round pick like there is no guarantee that you get a better quarterback than Dak prescott just because you pick somebody in the first round like daniel jones as was a first round pick like they act like he wasn't but he was a first round pick you look at guys, you know, other guys around the league. Like, what was the boy, um, Josh Rosen? His ass was a first round pick. You know what I'm saying? Baker Mayfield was a first round pick and a high ass first round pick. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. Like, you go down the line. Like, you have a better, you have a better chance of finding a quarterback in later round that could be something than you actually do in the first round, right? You look at Tony Romo. Was he even drafted? Dak Prescott was a fourth round pick. You look at Tom Brady, what he developed in, into, right? You you go down you go down the list, and even Patrick Mahomes wasn't no high ass first round pick. He was like pick number fifteen. I think Harvey and I have done some math. Hard for, what was it for anybody that gets selected in the first round? What was the percentage that they make it to the Super Bowl? Ten percent. Ten percent. Shit. So yeah, <laughs> it's only been I believe it's now th no no it's thirty three quarterbacks that have won the Super Bowl. So you know what I mean that that goes to show you that it's not easy to to get to a Super Bowl. So unless you got that quarterback that has that killer instinct, chances are you're not going to be able to hang with uh, Patrick Mahomes and company, right? Uh, but uh, I did see a lot of comments on there. Um, one of them was about Lamar Jackson. Nobody gives heat to the Bills or to the Ravens because their quarterbacks haven't even got to the AFC Championship. Lamar Jackson only has one playoff win. One. So, you know, one. Matter of fact, look at Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, I even won a damn playoff game, was on the losing side of a 27 point comeback. And he does not get any criticism. So, you know, it's selective. It's selective. They, they, listen, the, the national media at large are what I call kingmakers. They will, whoever they 
value whoever they want to be the, the face of a franchise or the face of the league going forward. They will highlight all of their, you know, positives and they will hide all of their fail, uh, other failures. Like, you know, if Dak Prescott was in a playoff game and the Dallas Cowboys gave up a 27 point lead, they will still be talking to, talking about it right now. There will still be a segment, you know, discussing the 27 point depth uh, comeback. You know, Dallas Cowboys should move on from him expeditiously. You know, they still say that Justin Herbert is a top four quarterback. Still to this day. Still. So, you know, that's that's a, that's what I'm talking about. Like, there are agendas that they push, you know, when it comes to certain players. And, you know, if you're a Dallas Cowboys, you know, odds are, you know, you're going to be on the wrong end of that agenda. L- look at Trayvon D. Like, let's not even look, you know, at the quarterback position. Can you tell me which 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 uh, cornerback gave up the most yards this year? Just off the top of your head, you can't because it, it wasn't Trayvon Diggs, so they didn't give a damn this year. That is true. Because listen, I can tell I can tell you that's not really a stat that people care about. When you really think, think about cornerback play, you want to see their coverage grade, passes defended, interceptions, touchdowns surrendered. Who who gives a damn about yardage? It could be a game where you go up thirty points in the first half and you're playing prevent. You don't really know, you know, how this yardage got get the guy given up. Who cares about yardage? There's been, listen, like they talk about that. There's been seasons where what's the boy from the Saints that's cornerback? Oh, uh, what's what's the kid's name? Lattimore. That boy gave up down to 800 yards one year. He still made a he still made a Pro Bowl team. So nobody cares about this unless it's a Dallas Cowboy. Unless it's a Dallas Cowboy. So you know, like they 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 move the goalposts all the time with us. Yeah. They're, they're, and and it looks like not only is it is it mainstream media, but it looks like it's all the cowboy haters that are helping them move the goalposts too, man. Uh, but uh, HCM, I guess uh, I guess I, I mean it's it's kind of towards the end now. We I guess kind of curious, man. How's 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 been the experience uh, being able to talk to some of the cowboy players? And if you can shine some light on it and let, let us know what players you've been able to interact with recently. So so far we've did three interviews with current players the first interview we did was with israel mcquamu it was me uh my mentor west coast cowboy and my brother landlord from alabama so you know that was the first uh active player that we you know actually interviewed and then i had the pleasure of talking to uh jalen tobert and i also got to talk to uh the kelvin joseph so that was the last last uh, active player that, that we actually uh interviewed and it's just it's just really at the end of the day, man. It it allows you to see that they just regular people, man. Like they're they're regular people. They 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 work a job and just the, the job that they work, you know, is, is love by is love by the masses, man. But they real down to earth people. They weren't Hollywood. They were they were real real good knowledgeable football guys like we are, man. They just happen to play for the team that we that we root for. So you know it, it helped it helped humanize them too, you know, especially. You know, chopping it up with uh with Kelvin Joseph, man. Like I know he's got a, a bad rap among the fan base about some of the off field things, about about how he's played. But at the end of the day, man, I got kids, you know, older than that, than that boy. So you know, like, you know, you gotta you gotta allow some of these young players opportunities to come in, bump their heads, you know, learn and develop. So you know, that's that's one of the things that that brought that that, that, brought, that came to my attention. You know, when I interviewed some of these dudes, man. But um. Uh, it, it was cool though, man. Especially getting getting to, uh, some insight, especially with uh with Jalen Tober. We were talking about schematically what they wanted to do this season. You know, I think that um him talking about you know some of the changes and and some of the nuanced things that they wanted to do to to fine tune the offense this year. You know, getting away to, from some of the um digit system uh, concepts that Kellen Moore was running into into more West Coast principles like Mike McCarthy and Brian Schoenheimer. So you know, I thought that was a, was a good experience and a, and a good conversation that we had in, in terms of just just from a football standpoint. So Dwight Dwight Dresher, he he's uh um he's he's been he's been a part of East West for a while. He says name five quarterbacks. You're taking over Justin Herbert, I guess, because you know. <laughs> are Her- we are we going off of five quarterbacks to actually accomplish more? Are we going off five quarterbacks? You know that oh. Uh, I think he means like to build your. What team. are you What are you riding with, HGM or I Henny? Mean, what are you I'm riding a- with? What am I riding with? Listen, I th- I think the issue when it comes to like these quarterback rankings and stuff, uh, too many too many times they use potential over actual production. There's been more productive quarterbacks in the league than Justin Herbert, uh, way more. There's been a lot more. He ain't won shit. Ain't never won a playoff game. 
You know, all he's done was throw for a bunch of yardage. That has not led to them winning their division. They have not led to them consistently making the playoffs, right? So, you know, like, you got guys that actually the one MVPs. Like, I would yeah. take, listen, I, I hate to even give any love to the Eagles, but Jalen Hurts is more accomplished than uh, Justin Herbert is right now, right? You look at somebody that's his peer. He just lost to Trevor Lawrence. Trevor yeah. Lawrence has been in the league less time, you know, had actually won his division, what he has never done. You know, won a playoff game by beating his ass. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there are there's quarterbacks that just more and, and spotted him too. Yeah, because you know, think about it. Like, and listen, I'm not saying that he does not have upside. When you just look at in, in a vacuum, he's big, he's athletic, he got a strong arm, he didn't he do this and do that. That's cute. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're playing Madden, I definitely will get Justin Herbert. If we're playing Madden, <laughs> I will go out and get the and get them, whatever. But we're talking about actually. You know, going out on the field and being productive, he has not done that. So you know, there and that's and that's part of the issue, man. You know that, that that's that's part of the of the issue. You know, uh, Dak Prescott. There are plenty of quarterbacks I think are more talented than Dak Prescott, but it's, there's only like a handful that are more accomplished or have done more on the field. You know, there's not too many guys that got a better completion percentage. There's not too many guys that won more games. Like people don't talk about this. Dak Prescott has a top twenty five regular season win percentage all time. There's only like 23 quarterbacks in league history that has a better a better win loss record for guys who played you know 90 games or more. You know, what I'm saying that he's in the company with like Joe Theismann. I think he, he has like the same win percentage as Joe Theismann does for his career. So when you look at like accomplishments, I know he ain't won no no Super Bowl, but shit, neither has Justin Herbert, neither has some of the other guys they bring up. So you know, when you talk about uh, you know production and accomplishments, you know. And, and and potential those are two different those two different conversations yeah it looks like people it, it looks like everybody that's on that says Dak is capable that's all i'm saying so a lot of people are are you know you're right you're absolutely right i think of anyone i like trevor lawrence but he hasn't even won he didn't get he didn't win his first uh playoff game either but he made it to the playoffs you know so well uh, all great questions man anything else harv kendall no, nah, man, I, I just want to say I appreciate it coming on, brother. Always, always good to have you, man, whenever you want to come on, for sure. Uh, it was great talking to you. It's always good insight and get somebody else's opinion. Uh, that's how we grow, man, so I appreciate it. Man, yes, I appreciate y'all for yes, having sir, me on, man. Yes, sir, I appreciate you coming on, you, all your followers. I know some of my followers are up in there as well. Appreciate um, appreciate Cowboys Nation. Um, HT on Sports followers for coming out. Our followers are coming out. I appreciate it, man, and we hope they get you back on soon, man. So hey, indeed, just let me know something, man. You know, I slide in. Yeah. Yes, sir. Before we let you go, where can we find you? Are you on what social media is? What are your plugs for, for the East West fam that tunes in later? Yeah, man. You can find me on uh YouTube. Just type in HTM Sports, and you know, you should see my logo. I got a cartoon ver uh, version of me as my logo. So it's HTM Sports on YouTube. And if you want to follow the same content on Facebook, it's Henny Damore. So I do appreciate y'all though, man, for tapping in, showing love, coming through, man, inviting me onto your platform. What game are you going to this year? Right now, for sure, I am going to. I'm, I think I'm going to the home opener, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the one that I, that I, I think that's the one that I circled. So I'm I should be at the Jets game, for yeah, sure. Right now, that, I beat October the first. I beat that Patriots on that Dallas game. So I'm looking forward to seeing the turnout out there in Big D. Okay, hey, JC said he's going to subscribe to y'all channel and we'll figure out a time. And see, that's my boy Moves, man. You know, he, he is a uh, Eagles fan too, but, you know, he show, he always come through all right with me in the chat. But, you know, he, it's all love, though, man. Like, we, the, rivalry, the rivalries are what makes the football worth watching, man. If everybody was kumbaya, this shit would not be worth watching. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I, I uh, you know, we, we have we have social medias, like me and Harv, we have social medias. We have a Twitter we have TikTok, we have the whole shabam, we have Facebook and, and of course Instagram. And dang, uh Dak Prescott's recent um his recent explanation of what football meant to him, it was beautiful, right? When he says, I just want to be uh someone that makes my mom proud of me. I mean, it's just like you said, football, it's almost like it, it can cure anything, I think, it almost at, at every specific time and, and place. But uh Let's give a little shout out. And here's a little rundown of everybody. Everybody kind of 
chiming in. Look at that ACA, man. You, everybody loving your work, man. Uh, they really are. So uh, we really, really appreciate your time. Um, that's it for us, YouTube. And if you can, you know, of course, subscribe and uh, hit that like button. Help us grow. We're trying to hit that 1K. Have a good one. Keep it real.